It's only right that the next rivalry we talk about in this series are protégés of Mitsurama Sao and Kenta Kobashi. It's Namichi Marufuji and Kenta, and much like their mentors, these two men are also just as great of partners as they were opponents. They shared the ring together 267 times, 136 times as partners, and with some quick math, means they faced off 131 times as opponents, 246 times being in tag matches, 14 times one-on-one, -on -one, 7 battle royals, which Kenta won one of them, 1 four-way dance with Kotoro Suzuki and Ricky Marvin, and 1 triple threat match with Shane Hayes. The template that was laid out in the first video of this series felt like it was a winner, so we're going to basically be doing that again, focusing more on the one-on-one -on -one matches like in the Kobashi Masao video, and I'll be talking about some of the tag matches these two have had in passing. Our first match between these two men takes place in Kenta's second ever match, taking on Naomi Jimar Fuji at All Japan's Super Power Series 2000. Sadly, there is no footage of this, but with Naomi Jimar Fuji debuting two years earlier in 1998, you already know pretty much that Naomi Jimar Fuji is picking up the win there. Kenta would wrestle in only 12 matches for All Japan, as two months later, the exodus happens with Naomi Jimar Fuji and Kenta leaving with Masao to Pro Wrestling Noah. Their first ever match in Pro Wrestling Noah takes place at the Differ in Tokyo, Japan, and what is their sixth ever event for Pro Wrestling Noah, and it's the first time we see footage of these two one-on-one, -on -one, and this is Kenta's 15th match ever. We get some nice amateur wrestling and some chain wrestling from both men that leads to a shoulder block kip-up from Kenta into a drop kick. Really nicely done there. Mar Fuji goes for the backdrop. Kenta lands on this feet and hits a smooth, deep arm drag. Mar Fuji was one of the strangest tree of oil attacks I've ever seen, basically giving Kenta a bronco buster to Kenta's chest as he's hanging upside down. Mar Fuji with a nice surfboard stretch. Mar Fuji hits the backdrop this time, goes for it again, and Kenta with a sunset flip. Mar Fuji kicks out. Mar Fuji goes for a back suplex. Kenta lands on his feet, hits two drop kicks on Mar Fuji, falls up with a crossbody off the top. Mar Fuji kicks out. Mar Fuji catches a kick from Kenta, flips him. Kenta lands on his feet. Kenta again with a drop kick. Christ, that's like the fifth one in this match. Kenta with a Rana out of the corner, goes for the springboard drop kick. Mar Fuji sidesteps it. Back elbow in the corner from Mar Fuji into a top rope drop kick. Kenta counters with a roll through. Mar Fuji kicks out, back suplex with a variation of a jackknife pin, and Naomuchi Marufuji picks up the win, much like many first-time matches when uh, the two guys are still super young, it's always fun seeing how they progress here, and I mean, we're seeing young Lion Kenta here in action, he's already having flashes of talent, he looks so good in this match, just a well-crafted match, I always loved Young Lion's matches, where the shine for most of the matches on the Young Lion, showcasing his skills, only to come up short, getting hit with a big move, and he can't, you know, kick out, somewhat of a big move in this case, really, not so much of a big move for Mara Fuji, but still, you know, big enough move for the time, at the next tour, the first ever Noah Navigation Tour would be the first time these two teamed up, losing to Richard Slinger and Two Cold Scorpio. Their next three matches against each other in the years 2000, 2001, and 2002 would not be filmed. The matches would range from 10 to 13 minutes, with Mara Fuji again winning all of them. In 2003, Kenta and Mara Fuji would go on the form, in my opinion, the greatest junior heavyweight tag team of all time, becoming the inaugural GHC junior heavyweight tag team champions, defeating Jushin Liger and Takahiro Murahama in the finals of a tournament. They would have some great junior tag matches throughout their reign. Pretty much all of them are fantastic. It's very tough to pick which one is the absolute best and which one's my favorite. I love all any defense that featured Ricky Marvin, personally, being such a big fan of his. But you, you can't honestly go wrong with any of them. And what a great Jim Verway title reign. And really solidified themselves as being a top junior tag team of all time. And they're still super young. Like, Kent is like three years into his career at this point. He's already solidified himself as one of the best, being a junior heavyweight tag team champion. They would hold the belt for 690 days. It's so crazy to think about that because at the time, their first ever win as a team came a few months before the tournament came to crown the first ever champion. So to go from that and at going on a 690 day reign as tag champs and the inaugural champions and really setting the, the standard to what a junior heavyweight tag team was, really incredible stuff. As their next singles match takes place on November 13th, 2004 at NOAA Navigation Uprising Spirit and Cork and Hall to end out Kenta's seven match trial series. Kenta was awarded this trial series at the end of 2003 after losing to Takashi Sujiura in a GHC Junior Void title match as part of a reward for his performance at such a young and early age. So he's still, you know, super young, still three, four years into the business at that point, you know, when they gave him the series. And he ends out the series 
against his current tag team champion partner was such a great idea too to add hype to that final match of the trial series the seventh match as the seven match trial series mainly used for young lions who won't be going on excursion the last one i remember happening was katsuya Kanamura in 2017 after he won the young lion cup that year uh, kenda's brown and yellow gear makes his appearance here makes its debut in this video it's always funny talking about that because i've never heard kenda's reasoning behind why he wore those colors and why he wore them but on message boards at the time it was always discussed because he's going to kick the shit and piss out of his opponents i always love that and uh, i've just made that canon that's the reason why he does it kenta early on throwing some lightning fast kicks at marafuji some amazing palm strikes from kenta leads to a double leg takedown from marafuji the referee has to stop marafuji from using a closed fist fantastic spot of both men standing Standing on their heads, beating the shit out of each other. Marafuji goes for a leapfrog spot. Kenta catches them midair with a power slam. Marafuji with a sunset flip powerbomb to the floor. You could see who Hiromu Takahashi was a fan of growing up. Marafuji moves the mats and DTs Kenta on the floor. That's his damn tag partner, nonetheless. I mean, crazy. Marafuji goes for the springboard and Kenta kicks his legs out from under him to stop it. Kenta being a cheeky bastard, distracting the ref as he just paintbrushes Marafuji's face with his feet. Kenta lighting up Marafuji with a kick to the chest. Great counter from Marafuji. Marafuji powerbombing Kenta midair. Marafuji with a crazy frog splash. Kenta was closer to the far side of the ring than closer to him. Just really crazy distance there. Goes for the Shinru. Kenta counters with a tombstone pile driver. Dear God. Tiger suplex from Kenta. Marafuji kicks out. Kenta goes for the burning hammer. Oh shit. But Marafuji stops it. Kenta puts him in the tree at well. Kenta with a springboard coast to coast. Oh shit. Falls up with this combination into a Basaiku knee. And Marafuji kicks out. Marafuji with a super kick into a Shinru gets greedy and goes for it again kenta goes for the german suplex marafuji lands on his feet goes for it again kenta catches him go to sleep from kenta one two marafuji grabs the ropes at fucking 2.99 dear god what a near fall that whole sequence was incredible marafuji with a metal rope dragon screw leg whip into a drop kick off the top rope marafuji tries to kick kenta into oblivion shinru from marafuji pins him and now kenta kicks out what a fucking match this has been a scary spot here of both guys just eating shit to the floor off the top rope. Spanish fly from Marafuji as they get back to the ring on the top rope. And that's it. Naomichi Marafuji pins his tag team partner Kenta in an absolute war. What a match. Dear God, even now, so young, these two put on a hell of a performance. What a great match. Really shows you why these two would be such great rivals and great talents. A phenomenal performance by both men. It's clear the, that the future of Pro Wrestling Noah was looking bright with these two men. So at this point, Marafuji has beaten Kenta in the first six matches. They would not wrestle against each other in 2005 as Marafuji would tour through Germany and Austria working for WXW and Rings of Europe on excursion, while Kenta would start his first major rivalry and singles competition against Suwa in violent junior matches. He also started teaming up with Katsuhiro Shibata as the takeover. Kind of funny how that plays up to what uh, Kenta's New Japan debut was 14 years later. Kenta would become the GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion at the Noah Destiny Show, defeating Oshiniba Kanemaru at the Tokyo Dome, which leads us to our next match, taking place on January 22nd, 2006, at Noah's first navigation in 2006 in Palm Budokan for the first time. These two men wrestle against each other here at Budokan. Kenta looking to defend his GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship against Naomichi Marafuji. And finally, looking to defeat Marafuji in a one-on-one -on -one contest. A real highlight for me as a Kenta fan at the time was Kenta's mixed theme. Using the champion is here intro into Hard and Life by Twista. He was such a hip-hop head, was always one of my favorite entrances. He also would use Where the Hood At by DMX. That was another treat. Yeah, Kenta was my favorite wrestler at the time. And pretty much until he leaves Noah, I love the man to death. Uh, he was one of my favorites and was my absolute favorite, you know, during the mid and late 2000s, even the early 2010s. Just phenomenal stuff. He was the man. <laughs> Wasting no time. These two with a fast sequence right out of the gate as is expected with the junior matches. Palm strikes and the leg kicks from both men. Fuck, these two are choosing death early on with a drop kick from Marafuji stopping the champion in his tracks. Butterfly suplex from Kenta gets a two count. Awesome psych out from Kenta teasing the kick to the back. Only did a nonchalant no look kick to the chest. Gets a fun reaction from the crowd. I always loved Kenta's disrespectful swagger about him. He would like use those spots like that. He's still 
does, you know, to this day in New Japan, and usually gets an audible reaction from the fans. Mar Fuji goes for the surfboard stretch. Kenta doesn't budge, though, and the Mar Fuji just opts to jump down on the legs of Kenta. Middle rope dragon screw leg rip. Mar Fuji wastes no time locking in a figure four leg lock with a shout out to Kaiji Muda with the love hand signal there. That's so awesome. Kaiji Muda would do the dragon screw into the figure four leg lock and with the hand signal, so just awesome to see. Even early on, Mar Fuji's love to Kaiji Muda there to see them do the M Alliance like 15 years later. Some great kicks from Kenta into a springboard drop kick that gets a two count. In one of the most athletic spots you will ever see, Mar Fuji runs from the corner, leaps over the ropes, and hits a drop kick on Kenta who's on the floor. What a bump, what a spot from Mar Fuji there. He's basically landing back first on the floor from like 8, 10 feet in the air. Crazy stuff. And what was one to finish during their first ever televised match gets a two count here. We've got a much different Kenta now, obviously. Mara Fuji catches a body kick, throws Kenta with a capture suplex. Busaiku knee from Mara Fuji that sends Kenta to the floor. Kenta catches Mara Fuji again, who's going for the springboard. But this time, Death Valley Driver on the floor. German suplex from Kenta gets a two count. Tiger suplex from Kenta. Mara Fuji lands on his feet. Straight jacket to German suplex from Mara Fuji. Kenta kicks out. Kenta leaps to the top rope. Falcon arrow off the top. Rope, what the fuck? Mar Fuji kicks out. Kenta combination goes for the Busaiku knee. Mar Fuji stops it. Hits a couple of super kicks from Mar Fuji into a tiger suplex and roll through into an interesting tiger suplex. He doesn't really throw him, it's more of a roll through tiger suplex. Kenta kicks out of that. Buckle bomb into an alley oop from Kenta. It's supposed to be a run into the floor, but we get some miscommunication as Mar Fuji waits patiently for Kenta to flop over the ropes after he does it. Super kick on the apron into a Shinru. Off the turnbuckle to the floor. Nuts. Kenta gets back in the ring at 18 and gets killed immediately with a springboard dropkick to the side of the head. Mar Fuji now setting up for an avalanche in Rube. Kenta tries to counter with a back suplex. Mar Fuji lands on his feet. A couple of super kicks from Mar Fuji leads to a regular Shinru. And Kenta kicks out. Mar Fuji goes for the Spanish fly. Kenta counts the top rope fisherman buster in again. Mar Fuji kicks out. Kenta with a Busaiku knee. Mar Fuji kicks out. Go to sleep by Kenta. And again, Mar Fuji kicks out. Enzu Busaiku knee into another Busaiku knee, and that's all she wrote there. Kenta finally beats Naomichi Mar Fuji and retains his championship. What a fucking performance again from both these men. These two young prodigies who've invented moves that will be used for probably the next 30 years of wrestling. This would only be their one and only junior heavyweight title match, and it somehow gets better between these two men. Naomichi Mar Fuji becomes, at the time, the youngest GHC heavyweight champion, being the first champion in his 20s. He was 27, beating Jun Akiyama at Shiny Navigator. He's also, I believe, at the time, he, he was definitely the sh smallest heavyweight champion. I think he might still be all-time, because I think he was like 190 when he beat Junakiyama. Just pretty crazy to think about on September 9th, 2006. Nine months after the GHC Junior Heavyweight title match in Budokan, these two men battled out for the GHC Heavyweight Championship in Budokan. At Noah's Autumn Navigation in 2006, Naomi Jamar Fuji looks to successfully defend his championship for the second time, taking on Kenta in what would be their first of two GHC Heavyweight title matches. Much different pace to this match compared to the previous matches, but it doesn't take long for these two to turn on the Jets in a crazy fast sequence that ends with Kenta hitting a Busaiku knee on Mar Fuji as he's attempting a leapfrog. Palm strike battle ends in a soul butt from Mar Fuji. Mar Fuji slings shots into a DDT on the apron on Kenta. Dear God. Palm strikes from Kenta with a front kick to Mar Fuji who sells his stomach. He's been taking a beating with body kicks and getting dropped on the barricade. Mar Fuji with an insane springboard drop kick to Kenta who's on the apron. That was all high risk there. There was really Really no sense of that. They were face to face and just springboard drop kicks him. And Mar Fuji finally is able to hit a top rope Asai Moon Soul. And dear God, he falls a little bit short. Throat first on the barricade. Disgusting. And you hear Mar Fuji just make an awful sound afterwards. It's a fucking miracle. He didn't do serious damage to his throat and voice box. I mean, that, would, that could have been a fucking hell of an injury there. That could have been a career-ending injury. You know, you never really know with that. Like, that could have been very, very serious. Luckily, Mar Fuji still 22 years in, still ticking. Kenta's a bloody goddamn mess, though. He's looking far worse than that than what Mar Fuji's looking like right now. Mar Fuji goes for the power bomb. Kenta lands on his feet, goes for the body kick. Mar Fuji catches it, hits a capture suplex. Mar Fuji 
he is risking death at this point in order to win this match, springboards up to Kenta and drives him face first onto the post as he falls to the floor. Marafuji goes to jump off the middle rope, gets counted as a jumping ace crusher from Kenta. Spot that's been done to death at this point in 2021, but in 2006, pretty brand new spot. Gets a nice little pop from the crowd. Springboard forearm from Kenta gets a two-count. Kenta combination. Marafuji knows the knee's coming, bounces off the ropes, and floors Kenta with a lariat. Super kick from Marafuji goes for the Shinru. Kenta th fucking throws him out of the ring and into the barricade. Marafuji has taken so many crazy bumps in this match. Kenta looking to brainbuster Marafuji off the ramp instead. German suplexes him off the ramp, but Marafuji lands on his feet and rolls on through and it's a super kick. Marafuji wants death, tries to German suplex Kenta off the apron. Falcon arrow off the apron from Kenta. Are you fucking kidding me? Kenta is not done though. Springboard diving foot stomp to the floor. Dear God. Tiger suplex. Marafuji kicks out. Busaiku knee from Kenta. And Marafuji again kicking out. Kenta goes for the go to sleep. Marafuji gets out of it and hits a Shinru. Jesus. Both men now. Trading King's Road style suplexes. One right after another after another. And they just keep getting up with fire. Spear. Finally, Kenta lands on his feet. Discus Lariat from Kenta. Ma Fuji fires off a super kick. Awesome self from Kenta. The crowd cheers. Insane stuff there. Mara Fuji with a wrist clutch variation of a Shinru goes for the Avalanche Shinru. Kenta blocks it. Mara Fuji fires off Kenta with a back elbow. Leaps up to the top rope and just a crazy spot of a top rope tiger suplex from Kenta. Marfuji has taken some of the craziest bumps I've ever seen in a Japanese Pro Wrestling Heavyweight title match at this point, and it's somehow not the finish. Marfuji kicks out. I put my hands on my head at this point. I was like, what else are these two men going to do to each other? Just unreal. Kinda with a pop-up go to sleep. Pins Marfuji, who gets his foot on the ropes at two. Naimichi Marfuji learned from the fucking best in Mitsurama saw about rope break kickouts. And just a fantastic sequence of Naimichi Marfuji destroying Kenta with kicks. Spanish fly from Marfuji. Kenta kicks out. Marfuji is fired up. Goes for the pole shift and hits it. And Naimichi Marfuji just about died multiple times in this match. But he pulled out the win over his rival Kenta. If there's ever someone's performance... Who deserved to retain a championship, like, through the match, you're just like, okay, this guy deserves to retain it. It's him in this match. Dear God, this match is the absolute pinnacle of this rivalry. It's incredible. It's one of the greatest Noah matches of all time, and in my opinion, it's one of the greatest Japanese pro wrestling heavyweight matches of all time. These two men showed the world that night why they were the new best things in Japanese pro wrestling. With this match, they proved the old head detractors wrong that those two men could be heavyweight champions at that size. For those who said they were forever junior heavyweights, nobody could be that size and still deliver incredible GHC heavyweight title matches. And they most certainly proved them all wrong with that match. That match is fucking incredible. They would not face each other in singles action in 2007. However... They would wrestle against each other in what is, in my opinion, the greatest junior heavyweight tag team match of all time. I talked about it in my best matches in Noah history video in Kenta Taiji Shimori versus Naimichi Marufuji and Kota Ibushi. Much like I just did that previous match, but I didn't go in-depth like I did there in this video. A match that everybody should see, as in the following year. Naimichi Marufuji wrestles in an all-Japan junior heavyweight title matchup. The first time he's been in an all-Japan ring since the exit happened eight years ago at that point. He wins, he beats Ryuji Hajikata for the championship, and two weeks after that, Kenta beats Brian Danielson on October 13th for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship to start his second reign. And on that same tour, Autumn Navigation, a day after my birthday, October 25th, 2005, they would have a champion versus champion match at Nippon Budokan. This would be their third straight match at Nippon Budokan. Unreal. They have a very tall task, however, of somehow figuring out how, if they even can, top their previous one-on-one -on -one encounter. Kyoe Wada being the referee for this match is incredible. A man who's officiated many of the bouts between these two men's mentors, which Masao was even on commentary for this match to add even more of an element of importance with this matchup. I'll never get over how fucking fast these two men can work at. I love how they showed the graphic of their records one-on-one -on -one against each other during the match, really driving home the point that these two men are no strangers to each other and that this title versus title match is a very big fucking deal. Marfuji will never learn bad things happen when you go for the Asai Moonsault, 
result, you either get your legs sweeped out, like so, or go throat first onto the barricade. Marfuji with a fun springboard moonsault back into the ring. Marfuji really working on the legs of Kenta here with figure four leg locks and dragon screw leg whips. Roll through knee bar. Some great psychology there. Busaiku knee gets a two count. Kenta drops Marfuji on the barricade as Wada tries to stop him. Follows it up with a neck break on the barricade. Shinru from Marfuji. Kenta kicks out. We see the jumping ace crusher counter again from Kenta. Looks like Kenta setting up for a knee to the back of the head, but Marfuji springs back to life. Hits a springboard drop kick that sends Kenta off the top rope down below to the barricade. Marfuji then drops Kenta throw first onto the barricade. Marfuji with a brain buster on the barricade. Dear God, these two men are really trying to keep this match on the outside. Power driver from Marfuji. Kenta kicks out. We see Wada playing some favorites towards his All Japan champion with Kenta reaching for the ropes during the body scissors sleepers. Kicking the ropes out of the way. He lets him grab him the second time though. Oh no, Marfuji, don't do it. Remember what happened last time. Thank Christ he clears the Asai Moonsault over the barricade. That takes some huge balls to go for that again. I would have never done that again after what happened to him if it was me. But that's the reason why Neimuchi Marfuji is who he is. German suplex, Kenta kicks out, but Marfuji hangs on. Marfuji with a great takedown and a variation to a cross-arm choke. He basically did a triangle cross-arm choke. Kenta gets back to his feet again. Again, the innovation on display for Marfuji doing a backcracker out of it. He's not done, though, with the cross-arm choke. He does a cross-arm choke suplex from Marfuji. Kenta kicks out. Marfuji goes for a top rope rana. Kenta counters, powerbombing him off the top rope. And it's a top rope diving foot stomp. Marfuji kicks out. Kenta hits his combination, then Busaiku knees Marfuji off the apron to the barricade and to the floor. Springboard dropkick from Kenta into his traditional running corner basement dropkick into the bottom of the buckle there. Power bombs Marfuji who kicks out. Octopus stretch from Kenta. We're really seeing these two men pulling out all the submissions on this one. Marfuji with the Busaiku knee. Marfuji sends Kenta to the floor off the top rope from the apron. Shinru for Marfuji. And again, Kenta kicking out. Dear God, Avalanche Shinru gets countered with the Tiger Suplex. But this time, though, Marfuji lands on his feet. It doesn't matter, though. He's still getting a Tiger Suplex. And Marfuji kicks out. Busaiku knee from Kenta. And again, Marfuji kicking out. Kenta opts to kick the shit out of him. And again, Pins him after kicking the shit out of him and he kicks out. Kenta drops down the knee pad. Goes for the go to sleep. Insane mid-air counter from Marafuji. What a spin kick from Marafuji. Fuck, that was incredible. A tremendous sell again from Kenta. Another perfect spin kick into a super kick. And again, Kenta kicking out. Pulse shift from Marafuji. Marafuji can't get a cover with the injured knee. Wada starts stretching it out so Marafuji could get over to cover him. He does so and Kenta kicks out. Kenta goes for the go to sleep. It looks like Marafuji stopped it. But Kenta hits it. Stacks the pin up too. And Marafuji again kicking out. Both men desperately trying to pin each other at this point. Tr they tried everything, and they've done everything up to this point. Both men firing off shots back and forth. Another go to sleep from Kenta. That's gotta be it. No, Marafuji kicks out of it again. Oh shit, pole shift flosion right in front of Masawa on commentary. And Kenta kicks out of it, dear God. And after 60 minutes, it's a draw. I have a theory that every great rivalry in Japanese Pro Wrestling needs a draw to make it a true great rivalry. What an incredible way to follow up their classic match for the GHC Heavyweight Championship. A match two years prior by putting on an absolute wrestling clinic. It's probably one of the best Noah Jr. matches of all time. As well as we got to see for the first time in this rivalry the pole shift flosion. Both men walked in as champions and both men walk out as champions. And what's sadly poetic, this is the last singles match these two have when Masao is still with us. It's pretty awesome he's here for commentary though. Namichi Marafuji would go on to beat Tiger Mask 4 to win the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom 4. He would become the first person to hold all three of the big three of the Japanese Press promotions, All Japan, New Japan, and Noah's Junior Heavyweight Championships. They didn't face off against each other in 2009. Kent is out of action for seven months in October of 2009, having suffered a torn ACL. His return match, however is our next matchup in a GHC Junior Heavyweight number one contenders match in Cork and Hall at Noah Navigation with Breeze. Kenta and Heimichi Marfuji battled out for those keeping track. Their record against each other is 7-1-1 one, and one in Marfuji's favor. Bit lopsided thanks to the first four matches when Kenta's still in his young lion stage, but you take that away, it's 3-1-1 one, one, when they're even footing, I would say. 
Kinda getting a big pop during his entrance. That was fun to see. Awesome to see that the people <laughs> wanting to see Kinda back. Kinda right out of the gate. Looks for instant death with a Yakuza kick in the corner, but Marfuji gets out of the way. Body kick from Kinta. Marfuji catches the third one, hits a dragon screw leg whip. Marfuji targeting the previously injured knee of Kinta early kicks to the lead leg there. Marfuji with a knee breaker on the apron on the injured knee. Marfuji keeping the pressure on Kinta with a drop kick into the injured knee into the barricade. Palm strikes from both men. What a great top rope flying Laird. Kinta gets some serious hang time on this one. Kinta with a Busaiku knee that sends Marfuji's head right into the ring post. Fuck. Springboard shotgun drop kick from Kinta into his basement corner drop kick. Pop up ace crusher from Kinta. Any times when it's a pop up move, it's always awesome. Like they're just so awesome. Coast to coast drop kick from Marfuji gets a two count. Shinru from Marfuji. Kinta kicks out. Kinta counters the Shinru attempt with a tiger suplex. Marfuji kicks out. Go to sleep from Kinta and again Marfuji kicking out. Kinta hits his combination goes off the ropes and Marfuji with a great parry to a body kick into a spin kick goes for the pole shift shoves kenta forwards who lands on his feet gets super kicked for his trouble as kenta kicks out of two that would be a spot that marfuji would love to do that little front suplex where the guy would land on his feet and he just super kick him tiger flotion from marfuji and that's the finish. It's tough because I feel like Kenta should have won this match on his return. But all in all, very good match. He went about 25 minutes. It felt like the with at the pace they were working, it went like 10 minutes. Like just those two work at such an unreal pace. It's insane. They wrestled for the first time in the same year since 2000, facing off six months later at the Noah Winter Navigation. It would be Marfuji's return from injury this time. Pretty wild back-to-back -back matches here are seeing these two men's return from injury. As Naomichi Marfuji got hurt mid-match against Kenny Omega and DDT's Ryogoku Peter Pan show and was out for five months before this match. This would be the final time these two faced off one-on-one -on -one at Nippon Budokan. Marafuji rocking a silver and black look here. Usually Marafuji rocking the usual something with red. Usually the red and like the gold. But right here, the silver and black. Pretty awesome fit here, if I do say so myself. They love that leapfrog mid-air strike spot. They, again, they use it here in this match. Marfuji getting sent into the ring post hard. Marfuji suplexing Kinta from the floor onto the apron. Kicks in the corner from Kinta. Marfuji springboards Kinta. Tries to body kick counter, but no. Marfuji lands on his feet and then catches it and hits a dragon screw leg whip. Couple of DDTs from Kinta. Springboard drop kick from Kinta. Marfuji runs into a lariat that turns him inside out. Kinta combination there. Marfuji runs Kinta over with a lariat. Marfuji hits the springboard Asai Moonsault. Thank Christ. The young lions at ringside are like, Be better bring this barricade close to the ring. I wait with bated breath every time he does that on Kenta. Like the GHC Heavyweight title match before, right away, Marfuji hits a springboard dropkick on the side of Kenta's head as he makes his way back into the ring. Shinru for Marfuji, Kenta kicks out. Marfuji goes for the super kick. Kenta catches it and counters the super kick with a STF. Kenta with a basement corner drop kick on Marafuji. Kenta hits his top rope tiger suplex. This time, though, fighting spirit from Marafuji. Oh, shit. Ooh, it's a Rana and a spin kick on Kenta. Marafuji with his front suplex shove into the super kick spot. Kenta counters Tiger Flosion. Goes for the go to sleep. Marafuji gets the knee up. Kenta blocks the Tiger Flosion again and locks in an octopus stretch. Powerbomb from Kenta. Diving footstomp off the top rope into a Tiger suplex. Marafuji kicks out. Kenta hits the go to sleep and Kenta wins. Funny how they both traded losses in their return matches. Just really tells a great story there in the grand scheme of things. And for the second time in this rivalry, Kenta beats Naomichi Mar they would not face each other in 2011. This would be a big year, though, for Kenta, as he would form No Mercy, which would probably be, in my opinion, one of the best stables that Noah ever had. Dropping his usual brown and yellow trunks, opting for pretty much what is his gear right now, uh, with kind of these short trunks in kind of a solid black or purple color, as uh, in adding game over into his moveset, an Uma Plata crossface. I like to think that him and... Brian Danson traded moves with each other. Brian gets to use the Basaika knee and Kinta gets to use the Uma Plata crossface. Jokingly aside, though, I think they have a you know, great respect for each other. And Kinta was the one who ruptured Brian's eardrum in 2007. So, I mean, I think uh, they were, you know, pretty good buddies. And they, even though, you know, they've had some injuries in the past against those two in those matches, I still think, you know, obviously, it's still fair play to, you know, whoever uses moves when it's, you know, talking about guys in America and guys in Japan, especially in that time kind of the, in the mid to late 2000s and the early 2010s. It was pretty much the Wild West as far as moves that were being able to be stolen from. Kenta would yet again be injured, tearing another ACL to end up the year 2011. And in his return match, yep, you guessed it, he faced off against Naomichi Marafuji. And what's gotta be the only time this has happened in processing history, 
we get the injury return rubber match here between these two men, both losing to each other in their previous return matches from injury. Kendo Kobashi's on comedy for this one. Will his protege get the win in front of his mentor? We shall see. Marufuji hits a knee breaker off the apron, much like in Kenta's first return to injury match. Dragon screwed leg whip from Marufuji working on the previous injured knee of Kento. What a high angle backdrop from Kenta on Marufuji. Jesus Christ, he got up there. Snap power slam from Kenta gets a two count. Kenta with a diving lariat off the top rope into an STF on Marufuji. Kenta drops Marufuji onto the barricade. Kenta with an awesome diving foot stomp off the top rope to the barricade to the back of the head of Marufuji. Springboard drop kick from Kenta into a running corner basement drop kick. Powerbomb with a stacked pin from Kenta. Marufuji kicking out. Kenta with a combination. Kenta ducks the layered attempt. Marufuji ducks the layered attempt and rolls into a figure for a leg lock. Brilliant stuff there. Those two have worked that spot for years and now they've added a different element into it. Just a great Great, great stuff. DDT off the ropes from Kenta. You can really tell Kenta's a big Randy Orton fan with the scoop power slam. DDT off the ropes. He would do that, you know, jumping ace crusher, just a fucking RKO. Like, that's a fair fuck to him. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of funny that you, I would never suspect, like, Kenta being a big Randy Orton fan, but you really start studying his, his stuff. And it's like, that's a lot of Orton there. It's just wild. It's, as Kenta catches Marafuji super kick and locks in another STF, Tiger suplex Marafuji lands on his feet, multiple super kicks, and Marafuji still runs into a layered from Kenta, counters the go to sleep, springboard coast to coast, this time not affected as Kenta gets out of the tree of woe. Go to sleep from Kenta, and Marafuji again kicks out. Goes for the Busaiku knee, but Marafuji drops, kicks the knees before he leaves the ground. Dragon School leg whip from Marafuji. Super kicked into a Shinru before he makes the cover. Kenta counters the pin attempt of the game over. You see how adapting your moveset over time can really freshen up a rivalry there. Just great stuff. Spin kick from Marafuji. Kenta runs into a knee. Tiger Flosion, and that's all she wrote for this one. Naimichi Marafuji wins this one. One of my favorite matches of theirs since their time limit draw. You can really see how much these two have grown and adapted throughout the years. And they've added on to spots they've used in the past. Just That's what I personally love about a rivalry. When they can take something they've built and add on to it and make it even better. First, it's, you know, something I love. Kenda would go on to win for the first time in his career, the GHC Heavyweight Tag Team Championship in 2012. And in the following year, for the first time in his career... Win the GHC Everweight Championship, beating Takeshi Morishima at the Great Voyage in Osaka. Which leads us to our next match. The second and final time these two face off of the GHC Everweight Championship and the rubber match of title matches between the two men. Marufuji's won the GHC Everweight Championship match, and Kenta won the GHC Junior Everweight Championship match. And now, Kenta's looking to win out on the title match rubber matches, as I'm dubbing this. And then, for the first time... Looking to defend his GHC Everweight Championship against Naimichi Marufuji. Kicks in the corner from Kenta. Marufuji with a springboard dropkick to a perched up on the top rope Kenta that sends him flying to the floor. Marufuji with a pile driver on the apron. Fuck. Diving lair from Kenta gets a two count. Kenta wastes no time. Locks in the STF after the diving lair. Marufuji cartwheels out of the Irish whip and it's a drop kick. Kenta with a fucking diving foot stomp into the crowd onto Marufuji beyond the barricade. Jesus Christ. That's insane. Like, that is so far <laughs> into the crowd. And to just willingly just dive feet first. Nuts. Falls up with another diving foot stomp, this time in the ring, and Marufuji kicks out. Shinru onto the apron from Marufuji, who honestly takes just as worse of a bump, goes straight to the floor. As, <laughs> really, if I had to pick what bump I would take, I would probably end on, honestly take Kenta's there, because that's a hell of a bump. From the post to the floor. Marufuji with a couple of German suplexes. Goes for the super kick. Kenta again catches it and locks in the STF. Stands him back up though and hits a tiger suplex. Marufuji kicks out. Marufuji with a Shinru. Kenta kicks out. A bit of a fucked up spot here. I'm not exactly sure what happens here. But Marufuji lands face first from the top rope. It looked like maybe Kenta was going for a top rope DDT. But I'm not really sure what he was trying to execute. Musaiku knee from Kenta. Marufuji kicks out. Spanish fly from Marufuji. Kenta again kicks out. For the first time, the Koho from Marufuji into a pole shift, and that's got to be it. No, says Kenta. Kicks out of two. Kenta hits the Euro go to sleep for the first time in this fucking rivalry. Oh, fuck, and Marufuji kicks out of that. Not even the Euro go to sleep is enough to take him down. Some great strike exchange here with Kenta coming out on the winning end of it. Into a go to sleep, and again, Marufuji kicks out. Jesus, another and final go to sleep. 
Kenta wins and retains. This would be their longest bout that wasn't the draw. 36 minutes. And it would be the final time they faced off with Kenta being billed as Kenta. As he would go on to leave Pro Wrestling Noah the following year. Wrestling in his farewell match on May 17th, 2014. Where he and Naomi Jumar Fuji teamed up for the final time, defeating Katsuhika Nakajima and Takashi Sujiwara in what many Japanese pro wrestling fans thought would be the final time they would share the ring together, but we were given a gift. For Naomichi Marufuji's 20th anniversary show, and a deal to this day, it's been four years since it's happened, I still am not exactly sure how this happened. If it was a Noah's request, if it was at Kenta's request, the fact that this happened is incredible, and I'm very happy it did. WWE loans Kenta back to to Noah for one night to face his rival for the final time. And for the first time in this series, a match I've already reviewed and talked about on the channel after it happened. So that's fun. Going into this match at this time, I'm not going to lie to you. I was kind of emotional about it. All I could think about was, fuck, I wish Mitsuama Sao was here to see this. His pupil, a man who he tried to mentor and help become the guy who becomes the president of the company. Name Ichimar Fuji, reaching 20 years in the business, and to be there with Kenta Kobashi, and to be there with Toshia Kawada, and even that Thotawe out there on commentary, have the four pillars out there commentating this. Like, it would have been such an awesome moment seeing Kobashi and Masao watching their two protégés bow out for the last time would have been such an amazing moment. Even though he was billed as a Deotami, I'm not going to call him that in this fucking video. <laughs> it's Kenta. It's fucking Kenta. Kyoe Wada is our referee for this final match. To really drive home this point that this match is the epic conclusion. I love how the crowd didn't give a shit about that he was dubbed a Deotami and just chanted Kenta the whole time. Seeing these men, 20 years and 18 years into the business still be as fast as they were on that beginning exchange was crazy. Thunderous chop from Marafuji out of the corner. Kenta dropping Marafuji on the top rope, you know what's coming. Knee off the top rope to the back of the head. Kenta goes for the Irish whip. Marafuji cartwheels and hits a drop kick. Crazy. A man in his late 30s can still nail that to perfection. Fisherman Buster from Kenta gets a two count. STF from Kenta. Marafuji sends Kenta over the barricade. Is he going to do it on the 20th anniversary show? No, says Kenta. Stops him wisely. Yeah, thank God he did not do that. That would have been insane, but that is extremely dangerous. I mean, he barely got that off in his prime, you know. Diving layer from Kenta. Kawada kicks from Kenta. Marfuji returns the favor with Kawada kicks. Fun doing that in front of Kawada there. What a fucking super kick from Marfuji. Marfuji just about kills Kenta as he drops him off the apron trying to do the pile driver on the apron spot that he had done in the previous match. I remember this spot vividly happening and having not watched this since it came out. And fuck, it's still super scary. Kenta goes for the diving foot stump off the top to the floor. Beyond the barricade and Marfuji stops that from happening again. I don't think a man at 30 years old could have made that spot. But who knows? Maybe I'm underestimating Kenta. Spanish fly from Marfuji. Kenta kicks out. Fuck. Marfuji still throwing that amazing spin kick 20 years later. That lays out Kenta. Kenta gets laid out by a super kick. Shinru from Marfuji. Kenta kicks out. Game over from Kenta. Marfuji gets out of it. Busaiku knee from Kenta and Marfuji kicks out. Discus layered from Kenta. Springboard dropkick from Kenta into a corner basement dropkick that gets the crowd rocking. Diving foot stomp from Kenta into the go to sleep and Marfuji kicks out. A sick coho from Marfuji and another coho from Marfuji from good measure. Game over again. For Kenta, Marfuji gets out of it. Body kicks from Kenta. Marfuji tells him to bring it, which Kenta's shaking his head like, and hey, you don't want that. That was such an awesome moment as he just kicks the shit out of him at that point. Marfuji kicks out of two after the head kick. Go to sleep from Kenta, and again, Marfuji kicking out a couple of Kohos into a question mark kick. A final Koho, and Kenta kicks out. Emerald Flosion from Naimichi Marfuji. And just a fitting way to end this one. Naimichi Marufuji is your winner. At the time, this match may be kind of sad. Seeing the guys I grew up with watching in the mid and late 2000s, seeing them almost kill themselves out there. Especially that pile driver spot. But honestly, besides that, still a really good match. I joke that Marufuji's prime is 2003 to 2018. Like, he's such a generational talent. Man, he's got like 15 years of his prime. Like, at that point, 20 years in, to still have incredible matches... With like what he did with Kento Miyahara that year at the Champion Carnival. Just insane stuff. We had a glimpse of hope there for a while after Kento got released from NXT and from WWE. 
if that could happen again in the future, if he could go back to Noah. But no, Kenta turned his back on Noah and joined New Japan, debuted a few days before Masao's anniversary show, no less. At the time, I understood it. Probably got more money. New Japan was by far the biggest and best thing going on in Japan at that time. But if I knew what would happen to New Japan, I would 1,000% advise him to go back to Noah. I get the man's got a family to take care of, and the more money, the better. But fuck. Him and Keno, and him and Kaito Kimura would have been fucking awesome to see. Having him take on Go Shizaki again. Having him taking on Takashi Sujiura again. Having him taking on Katsuhiko Nakajima again. Would have been so awesome to see. I personally would not have wanted to see him and Marfuji fight again. And not have him have a match again. I think that final match should be the 20th anniversary of uh, Naomi Jamar Fuji. I would have killed to see them do a tag run though. That would have been so fucking cool. To see them in their 40s doing a heavyweight tag team run. Would have been really really fun. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's ever going to happen. But, hey, you never know. You can never say never. They just might do that. You know, you never know. The ever-changing future of Japanese pro wrestling. The world is constantly changing. You never know. Because I think Kenta just saw that last match with Mara Fuji as his goodbye to pro wrestling Noah, really. Which I totally understand. I think that's the perfect goodbye, all things considered. So, their record. As of right now, at this recording of 2021, maybe we'll have another match in the future, but it's 9-3-1. Again, take away the Young Lions matches. It's 5-3-1. Five, five wins for Naomi Chima Fuji, three wins for Kenta in the 60-minute draw. Which sounds a lot better, and looks a lot better. Cage match, for some reason, when you try to look up their rivalry, when you see their one-on-one -on -one matches, it doesn't show the draw. It's like hidden away for some reason. Just wanted to warn everybody if you're trying to look for that on cage match but that will do it for this video i hope you all enjoyed it i had a blast reliving this rivalry really brought up a lot of memories and brought back you know seeing uh in the recommend section anything that a ricky marvin was like oh those those are the days in the mid to late 2000s just it's trying to find any ricky marvin stuff trying to find any kenta stuff trying to just find anything that involved uh, the juniors at that time, and, they, and when they became heavyweights too in their early 2010s. Just incredible stuff, so much fun. But I hope you all enjoyed, and hope you all got to either relive this rivalry or live it for the first time and learn something uh, about these two men, because they were sensational. They really paved the way. I truly believe they paved the way for what a lot of the undersized heavyweights of today can do. A lot of the guys who start off as junior heavyweights and work their way up to the heavyweights, guys like Kenny Omega, guys like Katsuhiko Nakajima, guys like Koto Bushi. like if it wasn't for really Kenta and Marafuji to still be that size, you know, 190, 200, and, and fighting, you know, heavyweight guys, fighting guys like Takeshi Morishima, fighting guys like Kenta Kobashi, and you know, guys that were at that time, you know, 230, 240, 250. Even, you know, Morishima was probably in the 250, 260, 270 category. But still, you know, big, big guys really changed uh, the way, I think, not only Japanese pro wrestling fans, but I think wrestling fans as a whole, really the whole psyche of the wrestling fan really changed around that time in the mid-2000s where they were kind of more accepting to the smaller guy being a heavyweight champion. So that was just really, really fun to relive that. And I hope you all enjoyed it as I will catch you guys next time. Take care, everyone.